Hi there, it's Lisa again. I'm here at the store and today I'm chatting with another blogger. Um, today I'm chatting with Julie Marshall. She is in just north of Chicago, Illinois in the US. And so let's say hello to her. Hi. Hi, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. Um, we met a while ago on um, a Zoom call, which was about blogging, a, a kind of a mastermind in blogging. And right. Um, we wanted to connect and now here we are and so we can get to know each other <laughs> yes yeah so um, tell me your story how did you get into blogging um, well I had been a doctor I'd been a dermatologist for 35 years and then when I was getting ready to retire I just thought I would retire you know and just you know, but I was um, but I had been trying to um, it's kind of crazy I was trying to figure out hairstyles because my hair was dark and I was gonna I uh, wanted to go gray and didn't know how to do it so my hairdresser told me to go on Pinterest and, you know, look at some pictures, you know, of haircuts. And I thought, I thought Pinterest was like arts and crafts. And she said, no, it's a little bit more than arts and crafts. You really should look at it. So we looked up and we found hairstyles. And then I started seeing different, you know, hair, recurrent hairstyles of, of silver haired pixies and stuff. And then I saw that sometimes it was the same woman, you know, a few times that I kept seeing. I was like, oh, she's got a cute haircut. And then I would click on her link, which I didn't know what that was. And then I would get to her blog. And I started seeing that this one particular girl, um, Beth Dejali, who's a, a fashion blogger and lifestyle blogger. Um, so she was really cute. And I thought, oh, I started reading her stories. And, you know, is, is it well as bringing getting a haircut? So I got the haircut. And then I thought, oh, it's kind of fun. So I was reading blogs. And, and she would write about her family. She'd write about her outfits. And she'd write about recipes. And I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. And it was kind of like the full life that I live. So I thought, oh, I could do this. So fast forward about six months after I retired, I mentioned to my kids, I was thinking that I might start a blog and I didn't even know they even know what it was because I didn't know what a blog was, you know, six months <laughs> earlier. And they said, oh, you want to make a lifestyle blog? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, well, we'd read it. And so I thought, well, great. And I, you know, I had these four young adults, they're all saying they'd read it. And I said, okay. So they said, so I started writing it and I, but I really have the, I, I have a passion around all of it. Um, you know, on, on Instagram, I'm mostly a fashion person. Um, that's why my main thrust, but I love food. I love family stuff. I love tablescapes. I love decor. You know, yeah. that's kind of you know, one of the connections we had when I was listening to you talk um, to Carianne, um, you know, that um, I love, ironically, French country fashion, uh, French country design is really one of my favorite styles of decor. And so there was an overlap there. And, you know, it's just all things. I just like pretty things. I like you know, I like, I like it all. You know, I like great outfits. I like great food. I like great um, house decor. You know, I like to read. You know, it's like there's not enough hours in the day. So, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know that. I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're just sharing your lifestyle with whoever is interested, right? Right. Exactly. This kind of fun and full life and kind of, I know some people are interested in some of the fashion and then they ignore my, um, my food post and then the opposite is true um that i've got people that you know look at my food posts and think i don't care what you're wearing and just gets get to the recipe you know and then other <laughs> people like the tablescapes and you know like the house tips so i kind of feel like they're all different friends you know along the way that you kind of make and it's kind of remarkable how much they communicate back and forth with you and when you make when you put something up that they want to know the details about it's, it's fun to share it and easy and easier than i expected oh goodness <laughs> so yeah, no, that's that's neat. So what kind of recipes do you mainly do? Um, just, you know, stuff that you would, well, I do holiday. Like entertaining sorry, stuff? Yeah, entertaining stuff, you know, but everyday stuff too. Like I'll do sheet pan suppers and I'll do like I'm making sloppy joes right now. Um, you know, so I'll do things that I would eat here or things that I would bring to a friend's house if I or my kid's house, you know, if I had to stop by with a new baby or stop over, you know, yeah. stuff that's easily to port, you know, to transport. So I'll make things like that. But um, the, the, this past weekend, I had friends over for dinner. And so then everyone wanted to know what was my whole menu. And I had made, you know, some like fun and some there for contestant recipes. A lot of times I get inspired by other chefs, you know, and, and then I, I would make the, the, the exact same recipe or I'll alter it based upon the first time I make it. I go, oh, I wish this had more vegetables or I wish this had more of that. And then I'll just change it up. And, you know, I just pop, I put it on. Um, there's a magazine, Home Talk, and that um, the Karianne taught me about and Home Talk and Upstyle and um, what's the last one? Home talk, upstyle, and food talk. 
So there are three different platforms that I write for uh, regularly. So, uh, which is fun. You know, so I start kind of yeah. talk about that kind of things. So different, but all recipes that are easily to do. You know, I mean, I don't do something that's crazy. I mean, for the most part, because I, you know, I want to move on to the next thing. So. Yeah. And w- without crazy ingredients that you'd have to go shop no. specifically for. No, I try, I try not to. I try and get in. And, and if, in fact, you know, we have, a, I, I'm lucky I have a spice house in both towns that I live in here. And I also live in California in the winter. And I have a spice house if I have to go, but overall it's just basic stuff. And now you can get so much stuff in the grocery store. It's kind of, you know, easy. I have a Trader Joe's near me. I've got a regular, you know, uh, a Ralph's and a Kroger's. And so I can get it there as well. And, and then there's always Amazon if it's something really weird. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was in, in um, Arizona in June and I bought at the airport, this Arizona spice. It was called Arizona hatch. And because oh. my husband likes to cook and I thought oh. he would like that. So he's used it all. And now we were looking for it. And I said, well, maybe I can get it on Amazon. So I looked on Amazon and they had every single one except that one was out of stock, of course. So then I looked up the their own website and then they had it and I ordered four. And then I got <laughs> a confirmation mail saying, we we received your order and we're shipping it and we're giving you an extra one. So I said you'd be good for a while. <laughs> yeah, we'll be good. <laughs> Let's hope you keep on liking it. Otherwise, you'll have to give it as a present for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, I do that with my boys. Like my, two of my uh, sons, like uh, or one son-in-law and one son, like um, to cook a lot. So I, I like hot sauces for them or spice mixtures and rubs. They like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just it's a really nice mix and we all love it. He puts it in everything. He puts it in soup, he puts it on meat. Puts it on oh potatoes. nice. Great. I like it. That's off to look for. Arizona yeah. hatch. Arizona hatch. Is it yep. spicy? Is it pretty spicy or, or no, kind of medium? It wasn't like tongue burning or uh-huh. anything. It was just very flavorful. So there's a blend of spices that they put together. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I, I love I think that's always fun to do, you know, because you know, especially when you're making things like an omelet or or a soup where you've got a lot of flexibility you know, and what it can taste like if you put that in first and then, and then see if you need to add something else, you know, that's kind of, yeah. 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 So have you always liked cooking? I have, I learned to cook um, probably when I was, you know, my, I grew up in a, a family of I five brothers. My mom really didn't let me cook because she just wanted to get it over with, you know, but, um, mm-hmm. but I would bake then. So I was a baker until I went to uh, medical school and then find medical school. And I lived on my own. Then I decided I needed to learn to cook. And so I would just, you know, just sort of, but this is, that was way before they had, you know, cooking shows. And I love the cooking shows. I love the, yeah. you know, the kitchen and the barefoot Contessa and, and Giada. And I love all those Food Network people. They're all my friends. Yeah, <laughs> me <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I've got all their books and, you me know. Me too. Love- barefoot Contessa, especially. She's the best. Yeah. yeah. Her, her, her books are gorgeous and she's phenomenal. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. And she's her, such an inspiration. And her home is gorgeous. Her, her um barn. Oh. Her yeah, barn, the, the Belgian barn and, style and barn. Yeah, so, she's so cool. That's such great taste, and I get a kick out of her styling of things. Yeah, so. yeah, it's funny because uh, I used to live in Belgium because my husband is Belgian, and the designer that she used is one of the Belgian designers that we know of, and oh, you know, fun, very close to where we lived, right? So, well, she, 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 well, she, I know that she spends a lot of time in Paris because I know she has a place there, so she probably has that connection, you know, from there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she knows true. everybody, you know. So, oh, I know. Yeah, I love that her and they're such a cute couple. Her and they Jen. are so darling. You they're know. adorable. Yeah, <laughs> you know? they are. I know. I guess they, they just seem really happy, you know, to watch. You know how the, that they've been together for so many years and that they still, you know, are are, are so close. Yeah, so, yeah, that's really together. good friends. That's so yeah, sweet, right? It's very inspirational. <laughs> yeah. Well, you what about a te- you? Have a teenager. I wanted to ask about this because you said oh, you have yeah. a teenager, and yeah. he he he's um interested in your I mean I know you want to talk about me but 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 about yeah. like your whole business and that he's actually gotten into the you know the gift um packaging yeah. what do you call it what's a monthly gift or whatever it's called yeah he's got a monthly subscription for a oh, candle yeah. yeah how cool yeah. is that yeah that's, that's cool very yeah, and he, very cool well, how did you get him into it just because of well, the pandemic um no he was on a, a, a phone call um with the opt was it the optimist club I don't know if you guys have that in the States. I don't know. You know it's like the Lions Club, you know. Those oh, yeah. Well, I don't, I've never heard of the Optimist, though. Yeah. Yeah. They just do things for the community and a lot yeah. of things for the kids. So he was on a Zoom call and they were talking about instead of getting a summer job, why don't you be an entrepreneur and start your own business? So 
he got off the call and I said, well, that's a good idea. Well, what do you think you could do? And then he said, oh, maybe candles. And I said, oh, well, that's easy. You know, I, I have suppliers for candles. We can get the candles. We can make a logo. Um, you know, we can brand it. And, and then I said in about, you know, community, um, if you don't, when you have a business, you have to support your community because you won't have a business without a community. Sure. So, you know, you have to donate to the church or donate to the soccer clubs and things like that. Sure. And, so, you know, I said, you know, if you have money, you can give money. And if you don't have money, you can give product or sometimes they want it because they're doing a silent auction or something. Yeah. And then I said, and if you can't do either of those, you can volunteer, you can give your time to them. So, um, you know, what, what do you think you would like to do? And he said, well, I'll give money. And I, you know, we thought, well, who could we give it to? And so in our community where we live, there is the, the hockey team, but he, he doesn't play hockey, but all the kids do. It's a big thing in our town. So yeah. um, he said the hockey team and the Lions Club and the Optimists, because those two, they built um, like a skate park for the kids oh. and they do the Easter egg hunt in the park and things uh -huh. like that. So, yeah. so he said he would donate to them. And we told them, you know, we, it's been a while and now we've got some money to give them. So I contacted them. And the Lions have asked us to come to their next meeting and ask my son to do a presentation about his candles. Oh, that's so great. That yeah. Just, it's, it's, so, it's really neat when you do that giving back. It's funny, you, know, you kind of don't even know how, you, how to do it sometimes. Um, when I was a physician, I was a dermatologist for 35 years and I was um, the last 20, I was a cosmetic dermatologist. So, you know, cos like fillers and, and uh, yeah. Botox. And so what I would do, uh, I have a niece, I have a niece who's a uh, darling and, and actually doing very well now, but at that point in time, this is not, you know, 20 years ago, she was not. And so she has cystic fibrosis and she, um, so I would have every, um, about, it's probably about March, I would have a cystic fibrosis day and I would um, do, uh, I call it a tax, um, tax deductible Botox. So people could come in. And they would write the check to cystic fibrosis for the amount that the Botox would have cost. Oh, and nice. then it, became a, it was a donation. So, so I was the you know, kind of the in-between person. All I yep. did was just put in the Botox. I was an injector. And then, um, and then they were able to get a tax deductible receipt, you know, for that full amount, which was great, you know, and it was, and, it, and yeah. people loved it. Every year they'd call and say, you know, oh, how's your niece? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it just was lovely. So, and it, it'll, it'll be really moving for your son to go to this, if you, you know, to this meeting, because another thing that happens, it just kind of reminded me when I was young, so I'm 66. So I was, oh, I was 66 next week. And so for me, um, you know, when I was, you know, 35 years ago, there were no women in um, the Rotary clubs or the Alliance clubs. They were all, all male clubs. Right. And ironically, when I started my practice, my attorney, my lawyer for my, uh, for my, my rent, you know, for my actual um, when I got my first uh, first uh, space, um, he was a Rotarian in Hinsdale, Illinois, and he asked me if I would come and speak to his group, like you just said, you know. And so, and I so I came and I spoke and talked about there were a bunch of old men in the room, so I talked about you know kind of I didn't call it this, but it was like old man dermatology, you know. So I talked yeah. about the rashes that they get and the flaky skin and you know the red faces, and I gave them all the explain the cracked fingernail fingertips because it was winter. So I was giving them all these little suggestions and tips. It was great. So I get all done with speaking for an hour. And then they said, hey, we'd like you to become the first woman Rotarian. Wow. <laughs> so I did. I joined. I was the first. So it wasn't that just old men anymore. So I, I joined and became that. So just tell your son to be careful. No, no, that won't happen. <laughs> <She's fine. laughs> but, but it was really a good experience. And they were wonderful. And we did a lot of, like you say, fundraisers in the park. We did the hot dog stand at the art fair, you know, we did the mm -hmm. handing out at the corner, you know, taking money, you know, from, you know, trying to get donations for cystic fibrosis. And we know for, um, yeah, actually one time it was for cystic fibrosis. So, yeah. uh, so different things like that, fundraisers, you know, we were involved in. Yeah, and no, it that's a great it's way really to, cool. to serve your community, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And they said in their email that they would like to do anything they can to support him and his business. So that's really good because maybe they will put on their website that the candles yeah. are or yeah you know, Christmas just think like about that. this as a Christmas present you know, you know for your for your family because it's such a popular item you know candles are yeah. so popular with especially with women as a gift for any hostess gift or any exactly. 
it's you know, or any kind of a holiday gift. I mean, it seems to me every time I look at every gift list when I'm making up my gift lists for my blog, um, candles are right up there, you know, with you know, more yeah. than anything. It's a very yeah. popular item. Yeah, here in the store, candles are one of our best selling items. Like we've I'm got sure. brand of candles and then a few from other brands that I purchased. Um just to have nice variety and because yeah. they're really nice candles. But yeah, yeah, candles really sell. I have women who come and they'll buy six or seven at a time. Like they want to see stop. all their girlfriends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a holiday yeah. party and stuff like that. So yeah. So it's a very yeah. fun, it's a fun thing. It's great that your son is, you know, getting, you know, a peek into all that early on in his life. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. And he's working at the store now. He's coming on Saturdays and Sundays in the nice. afternoon. Yeah. So he's been putting the barcodes on all the Christmas stuff that's come in and and, that's you know, great pricing it so he's learning how to do the pos and talk to customers that's uh, with, wonderful that's yeah it, that's just so helpful and i love when you said it during the session with the mastermind that you had figured out a way to use a handling center a packaging center that you know so that you can send yeah. the candles over there and then send the what you know the list and then they can do yeah. that um because that's a mess and, you know, it's hard and plus it takes up a lot of space, you know, that you don't want to have to devote to that when you'd rather be selling in your brick and mortar store. You'd be wanting to sell the actual, you know, you like keeping it really cost effective. So I thought that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Those fulfillment centers are really helpful because you yeah. don't have to deal with with any of the mess and, you know, the returns or your broken yeah, items. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. They do and everything for you. Yeah, and, so. and I also love that 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 whole tip you gave about. I mean, I'm not in the uh, at this point in my life, um, the uh, selling furniture. Um, but I loved how you had that. You know, you, you kind of suggested that people buy that insurance policy for very little money, but that would take care of all their problems. And I thought if you can take these yeah. hassles out, because so often I think women especially, you know, there's I've you know read studies that you know if there's a job that's you know out there and has ten qualities, you know, a woman you know, will be reluctant to go and interview for the job if she has eight of the criteria, eight of the qualities. And if a guy's got two of them, he's happy to show up for the interview and say, yo, 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 you know, it's you hire me. Well, I think women just tend to get really bogged down in the details and say, oh, wait, I can't sell candles because, you know, what happens if they break or what happens if it's summer and they melt or what happens, you know, and they just start what ifing the, themselves into oblivion. Right. And, and I think when you have solutions that you put forth early on, like you were doing with Carianne, where you say, oh, wait, 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 you know, you have a fulfillment center for that, or you have a VA for that, or you have yep. a teenager for that, then you can say, oh, there's a solution that is not, you know, that's very doable. That, then yeah. it gets people excited about, then they can just focus on being creative, you know, which is, yeah. the, I think, the best part about a blogger or, you know, best part about, you know, yeah. you know, you know, that kind of things. Yeah, yeah, you can be creative and you can share it and you can actually enjoy your life. Right, you know? right. It, um, it gives you freedom. It, it's it's a yes. great lifestyle. When you have the details worked out enough that you've got, I know when I worked in my practice, when I had, uh, as, which I was obviously an entrepreneur, I worked for myself for my own entire career. And I had, you know, I had nice staff. I had a really great receptionist. I had good nurses, I had good medical assistants. And so that made my life a lot easier. I had a wonderful lab. And I used the same people for years and years because I just loved how much they emphasized what I emphasized, which is the patient relationship. And that was real important to me, you know, even with the changing aspects of medicine, I really wanted to keep it, you know, patient oriented, like you would be customer oriented. And I am right. now as a, as a blogger. So yeah, it's a, it's a great to have those, that infrastructure in place. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have a team because that puts the pressure off of you. If you can trust the other person to do the job independently and know it's going to be done, that gives you such relief because as, For sure. as, as the boss, the entrepreneur, the owner, you've got to do everything, right? You I know, I know. I was amazed when you were talking. I, I don't want to keep getting off this, but I, I thought when you were saying in that conference with, uh, or that meeting with Darianne, you were saying how you have some virtual assistants to help you. So when you come up with a whole bunch of SKUs, you can send them over them, you can highlight the ones you like, and then they can put it into your catalog or into your website. And so you're not sitting there to go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's so, such a headache, you know, especially if you make a mistake and, you know, it doesn't work. They can check yeah. it out. It's just great. Yeah. And it's true. You know, when you're running a business on your own, you know, you have to do everything, like I just said. But, you know, the uh, you shouldn't be doing the, like sweeping the floor you shouldn't be right. spending time sweeping the floor because 
you could be making money for your business if you were yeah. on your computer. So yeah. you should have people to do those other jobs for you so you can concentrate on the money making activities and the important things, you know, but it's hard because when you get started, you can't do that right away. Yeah. You have to grow before you can do it. Yeah. But I was talking to um, Sarah Williams. She's the one who has the subscription box course called Launch Your Box. Okay. And uh, she said that once she hired someone, her her income 4X. Oh, wow. And, you know, she was so That's... hesitant to hire someone because yeah. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Yeah, but she did yeah. it and she 4X to her income, you right? Know, so, you know, I, even on this call, I would love to talk to you. I hear like, people say you get what happened. The answer is, oh, I have no, I can literally now, if you say, if you have a gun to my head, I can tell you 50 things I'd like to be good. 50 bucks, I'd like to be 50, you know, 50. But, you know, I, I have a life and I have other things to do. I, I would love to be able to, you know, like just do the creative part of it and then have somebody else do the, you know, the, the linking and looking up stuff and, you know, and, and, and organizing and, and dealing with the hassle aspect that take time. And I, you know, I would, and I don't know how they came about. And those virtual assistants, um, but I would like to find you know people that would help me because I think it would be fun and it would keep me just doing the parts I like. But I like I love to pick out outfits. I love to you know show what I think is cute together. I know what I, I like. I know where to get the things I like. But I'd like to be able to just say, okay, see this is it. Make a board out of that. You know, see this. Yeah. The, 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 you know, I, I like this like circle, circle, circle. Do it. You know, you do it. You do. It. That's what I love. Yeah, yeah. You can you can also get like teenagers to do that because they're good at it and they'd yes. be happy to do that you know a couple hours a week pay them something and they'll be happy to make you those kind of things oh, you know well, that, that would be kind of cool I, I, my partner mentioned that yes the other day she said that she used to have a company that she paid quite a bit of money to to do her uh, her um her boards every week and now she's being a teenager like you know a third of it and, yeah. uh, and getting you know all kinds of stuff back you know so i think that i have to i'm not sure how i'll find it but i'm gonna i'll gonna talk to my neighbors and see if i can pick somebody up or maybe go to high school and ask them if they've got yeah um, you know somebody in graphic design or whatever that would be interested in art you know yeah 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 <laughs> you know last year here right around this the corner from the store is a high school that's where my son goes and there was a student uh they have a co-op program and there was a young girl and she wants to be a decorator and oh. so the teacher came here and said, hey, would you take her on as a co-op student? So I had her from September till February every day. Oh, my God. Yeah, for free. Oh and yeah, so that was really helpful. And she was a good worker. She was really interested. She did a lot of extra things and she was crafty. So for Christmas, she I she had seen that I had these little wee crocheted pumpkins and so for Christmas, she crocheted like about 300 Christmas ornaments and we sold them in the store. So, yeah. So she got to um, learn how to, you know, make a product and think about oh my gosh, materials. What a, what a valuable experience for her. Well, this stuff gets inspiring. I'll definitely go and talk to my neighbors. I have next door neighbors. The husband's a graphic designer. And I'm going to ask him if he knows any kids that would be interested or, you know, you know, because I, I would love to find somebody that would want to just do, that could just, coach them to, you know, if they could work with me, I could say, if I could just, if I could just pull up the things I want and say, here, now run with it. Here's my link LTK you know, account, yeah. you know, come get it out of here, you know, put this together, make a board, you know, add the links. Cause I love to write the blog. I wrote a blog yesterday about, a, you know, black and white sweater and I love to write it. And I like, and, and, and I have taken the pictures and, and I, you know, so I could just basically say, here's the, four, you know, here's the 12 pictures I'm going to put in and I could import them. It's not, doesn't take you that long. But again, the more things that I can upload and then just read it, so yeah, that sounds like me because because I'll be the tone if the basics will be taken care of. That's worth doing. I'm gonna look into it. You yeah. inspired me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, your voice um the sound was cutting in and out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, 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 sometimes people tell me that. Tell me now. Is it better here? People say if I, I think it's better there. Yeah. yeah, I think I don't know why it's you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and another place you could go is to like a community college. Like okay. a graphic design student might want to. Yes. Um, sometimes they're looking for a co-op placement or something like that. You know, uh -huh. so yeah, try schools and colleges. Uh, if you have a church, you know, maybe there's a, you could mention at the church group. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone mm -hmm. in the community interested in doing that? You know, I'm sure you could find some. 
Well, you know, and I also think it would be fun to have, um, you know, I don't have really sophisticated pictures, but they're pretty, you know, on the blog. And so if someone, if I know that if someone was coming over to take pictures once a week, you know, I would be like, okay, let's do 10 outfits, you know, let's do 10 outfits, you know, yeah. and you just get, and then in between outfits, I'll run inside, you edit those, and then I'll run in and out, and then boom, we're ready to go. I would love that, you know, to have yeah. a photography student, you know, who could do that, because that would just be, you know, again, and it's not, you know, down the road, you know, if I made more money on my blog, I would be happy to pay the money, you know, up front to, you know, to even some grown up photographer. But if I found a kid that did it okay, I'd be okay with that, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that way you're batching your content, getting it all done at once, and that frees up your time. So, yeah, yeah, if I could yeah. give four blogs at once to some kid and say, now here's all my links, put them in, you know, and find them all the way through here, and, and then put and then do a, you know, shop the post from LTK. I would be so excited that boom, that's just done. Another one's on. What's next? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, that, and when I do recipes, you know, I know I should take the time to look up all the kitchen items that I'm using and then link them all. But I, you know, I'm like, oh, I got the recipe up. It's enough, you know, but it would be what it's better to have that opportunity to make money, as you say, in there. Right. Yeah. And I just, you know, you sometimes don't take that. It's like I like I do key search to look up my keywords, but then you can also do content assist where you add, make sure you're adding specific extra ones. And sometimes you just run out of juice before you're like in the mood to really add those extra words, you know, but you yeah. know, that's going to really help you in your Google search. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I need to do that. So yeah. Yeah. So you need yeah, to break it into batches, you know? So. Yeah. It's sometimes it's just hard to get everything done and you just want it to be done. Yes, you, you know? do. You just want to move on and say, I did it. But then you think yourself in the middle, like, oh, wait, did I do that? Did I put that video on that one? Did I, oh, wait, did I finish that? You know, cause that would be so fun. Cause you know, like I take pictures and if I had some kid taking it, They'd remember, take some still shots, take a short video, take a longer video, talk to the camera. So I could put all those into my, you know, different parts of Instagram and stories and, you know, because by yourself, it's just a lot. And yeah. for me at 65, 66, if you go on vacation, you come back, you're like, wait, wait, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> wait, exactly. Wait, where's, what, what do I use to crop the big folders with again? <laughs> no. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of work. It is a lot. It is. It is a lot. It's creative, but there's a lot of tedious parts to make it come up. You know, yeah. It turns, out, it turns out pretty, but I would like it to be where I can just focus on the parts I like to focus on. You know. Yeah, that's that's the ideal situation. Is you yeah, know, I like your idea. I'm looking for a kid. I'm looking for a kid tomorrow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about French country decor? You said that that's what you love. I do. I think it's a pretty. I like color. It's like when I like the color of my wall here is a pretty coral. When I was in, um, I, I haven't traveled a lot to Europe, but I traveled a few times, you know, to um, to France and I've gone to Italy and I've gone to Provence and um, I've gone to, um, you know, to uh, Cinque Terre and I've got, and I've seen some of the really cool colors that, you know, in Spain, I've been to Spain, you know, and you walk around and you see, you know, the, the pretty yellows and you see the pretty, you know, next to that, you'll see this pretty kind of a, you know, corally color. And I came, and so in this house, my office, we have a Cape Cod and just down the step from here, okay is the staircase to the front door. Well, in the staircase walls, you'll see them in a lot of pictures of my try my clothes, there's yellow and white stripe walls. So the yellow and white stripes come up and then you see this. So this just, uh, this little peak, peak up, oh, not just the coral peaks out and it looks good all year round. Like at Christmas time, long before Zoom, I just like to come into my room and have a pretty wreath on the wall, you know, and it's just kind of fun. And then, um, so I love, color. I love, you know, I, there's just no time that I don't want a scarf on or colorful earrings. I, even if I have on an all black outfit, I'll usually pull out something that's colorful to go with it. And so I like color and I like, um, I love the fabrics of the country French, you know, looks, you know, like I love the, you know, the reds and the yellows and the blues, you know, all the things that look like kind of aspects of nature, but, you know, kind of. Yeah. Stuff. So when I did my house in California, <clears throat> we live in a place called La Quinta, which is about half an hour west of Palm Springs. So Palm Springs is an airport you can go to. So it's half an hour um, east of there. And <clears throat> and the house is very pretty, um, you know, but it was very neutral, which was great. High ceilings, cream, you know, a lot of, you know, just really neutral canvas. And I wanted to buy a great big sectional. So I've got a great big, you know, kind of linen-y, kind of like the color of your clock behind me, kind of that, you yeah. know, kind of the oak color, you know, that, that linen color, you know. And so I that was the couch. And when you buy a sofa, <laughs> as you probably know, you know, they basically are going to send you like, in addition to the pillows, they're going to send you 
like 10 accent pillows because it's a big sectional. Well, I really didn't need 10, you know, linen pillows when I know I'm going to replace them with, you know, colorful pillows. So before they made it all up, they said, is there anything else you'd like us to do special about the order? Because I was having it made. And I said, um, yeah. I said, if I send you some fabrics, could we make some of the pillows, not the linen, just the cool linen ones, but could we make a bunch of them like some pretty, I find some pretty fabrics and I send them to you and they said, knock yourself out. You know, we'll just charge you for nothing, you know, because you're you're gonna we already included the labor for making the pillows. If you give us the fabric, you know, you pay for the fabric from you know from your other supplier and you know have at it. So I found a place in North Carolina, I think it was called North Carolina French fabric, something like that. And I found it online and they had some really pretty, um, if you see them on my blog, I actually have a one, I'd redone my great room. And so it was um, in, you know, kind of yellow Provencal fabrics and kind of reddish, probably a little tiny print. And then I had some sunflowers in a sister print. And I was like, oh, these are all great. And then, you know, they sent me little swatches. So I cut and I laid them all down and I figured out how to make, how many pillows I needed of this and that. And then I, you know, had it done. And then I found that same fabric for the kitchen balance, you know, and then, then I was, uh, this was really fun. I'm sure you've been in these kind of stores since you have a store like this, but um, you know, like we, like if you go to Carmel by the sea, which is not, you know, it's in, it's in, in California, they have a really pretty little shops. They have a little French little linen store, a French decor yeah. store, little. And they had, they had my, one of my fabrics, you know, in the kind of wax coated um, place bags. So I Ooh, have perfect. Perfect. So, and so then, I, then I have linens that go with it. So, you know, I really enjoy all, I like the, all the uh, interest and the layering aspects of French decor in a tablescape or in a room. Um, my husband is more of a, you know, clean, you know, you know, doesn't really like a bunch of fussing stuff. So I have to kind of work it into the house. And so the tablescape is the best place for me to do that, you know, for instance, or, you know, table settings or the, or the island, but not everywhere, you know. <laughs> I would have it everywhere. Rows and I have baskets with, you know, with, with silk flowers in them that, you know, and I lots of ivy and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have tons of dishes? <laughs> I do. He doesn't know how many dishes I have. Uh, what I primarily have is I have a lot of dessert. I have a lot of dessert and salad plates. So I switch them out. So I'll, like, I'll, like I just did a table this weekend and it was really pretty. It was on the blog. It was called how to make a pretty fall table. And I just had like, you know, white plates, but then I put on a sunflower plate as the um, accent plate. And I used that for the, I think it was for the, oh, for the, oh yeah, for the dessert. So I, you know, so I took it off the table, you know, but, you know, but the, the whole table was set up in yellows and reds and very Provencal and a woven tape place mats and, you know, and cotton napkins, very pretty, but, and sunflowers and I just, but then I popped on those. Yeah, so the, I love to look for those accent plates napkins those are all the details that to be that they're kind of like scarves and jewelry yeah. of clothing yeah, yeah that's why yeah. i like them both yeah. yeah me too i have so many dishes and <laughs> i have a, a the, honestly an armoire a two-doored armoire full of tablecloths i do stacked, too i do right? too I have yeah lots of napkins and i have to keep going through them because what happens is it's this time of year and then you, know, you put them back and then you want that time of year so you have so now yeah. is, now that we get the fall and and the Christmas coming up, I've got to move those guys to the top so that the red, white, and blues and all the spring guys can go down below. So they're not yeah. all toppling over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love, yeah. I, 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 in fact, when we were in Provence, as, uh, France, you know, maybe eight years ago, um, one day we went up and I bought a really pretty tablecloth and then it was beautiful. And then, and then we went down um, to, um, you know, we're back closer to Nice where we were staying. And we went to a little outside market and we bought two more tablecloths. And my husband's thinking, you know, how many more tablecloths do you need? And then I said, well, you know, I bought one over in, you know, Provence. And so such a you know, and the lady turned to her, my husband and said, ooh la la, you know, because I had apparently spent too much at that one. So these two were less than the price of one, <laughs> but it was cute. So I, I really enjoy that, that, those memories of, you know, of other places that you've been. You know? so, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, great. Like when I think I have things in my house that I love, but always when I look at it, I remember where I bought it and who I was with and what I did that day. So it's Absolutely. not just the thing. It's, it's not just stuff. It's, I know. I tell people when they travel, for instance, you know, and they're visiting Chicago or whatever, and, and they think, oh, I don't know that I really need this. I said, it's really not about needing it. It's more that <clears throat> does it evoke, uh, you know, some sense of, of uh, attachment or memory? 
And for me, like, I know that um, I have a bracelet that I bought, you know, in France, you know, and, and I bought it in a little market and it came from Murano, Italy. But every time I put it on, I, I remember that day and that, you know, being out shopping and, you know, and, and going out for tea afterwards. And you just kind of remember, it's kind of, they're very, almost a little talisman that it just makes you think of that. So I, I, I agree with you because yeah. it's more, it's for everybody, but for, for, for me, that's that, that. And that helps you have a card. Like, people card something that you can have forever. Um, and so like, well, what kind of wear on? But even just simply draped or just, it doesn't have to be really fancy now. It's more the idea of putting the color around your face, especially as I age, you know, it's nice to have that. And just in how it just changes up your look and makes you just look more um, elevated, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I wear a scarf like almost every day. I have a million. Me too. Scarves. Me too. We do. Yeah. I have them all hanging out. I have them hanging out on these little coat racks just so I can see them. And I do them kind of by color so I can sort of walk, go say, okay, these are the black and white stuff. Okay, oh, here's the red. And the blue. And so like, it helps me to just, you know, say, oh, yeah, what is it? What outfit, what piece can I use to pull that together? <laughs> well, do you remember I don't know if it was in the states but there was there used to be a shop called the the tie rack for men's ties no I don't remember that one yeah oh. well they had this this wooden thing with loops on it it was uh -huh. for ties to hang ties but I yeah. used that for my scarves oh that's right yeah I I have um I actually hang my jewelry that way um so I hang all my necklaces on tie. so I'm actually having a, a, a blog coming out shortly on closet organizing and that's how I do all my all my uh, necklaces are on tie racks because then you can see them all and they don't get all knotted up. Because so people say yeah. I put them in drawers. And if I put them in a drawer, it doesn't happen. All I've got in my drawers are my underwear and my socks because I, I know I'll wear those. Okay, but I don't have to remind myself to wear those. The necklaces I'll forget about. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was talking to Carrie Ann and I was asking her about storage because as a blogger, she's always getting products and. What do you yes. do? What do you what do? Does she do? Yeah. Well, she said she gives a lot of it away, like to yes. her neighbors or her friends or whatever. Yes. And then she's got totes. She said she's very organized with it and she's got totes that are labeled and, you know, she keeps everything in one piece. But like, that's the thing is running out of space in your oh, house yeah. so hard. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that is right. And, and I think what you have to do is you have to kind of, you know, that is that Marie Kondo thing. We have to say, well, do I, does, does this really work for me or is it not working for me? If something, is it really make, if, if something's scratchy in a clothing item, if it's scratchy or that, you know, you can never make the collar lay right, or, you know, or, or there's something that if, if pinches at your waist, move it on, give it to somebody else. So my, um, my, I have a girlfriend that gets, she has, she was actually my care, my nanny for my grandkids, uh, for my kids. Um, and she's still my girlfriend. And so she um, has three nieces. So many of the items go to them, and, uh, many, many all the time. And then, you know, or if I clean these are here, you know, I try and get rid of as much stuff as I can say, well, I really haven't used this. You know, I haven't used this. And usually, you know, you, people say usually a year, I usually say like a couple of years. And then I say, okay, move it along. You know? Yeah, move yeah. on, move on. Yeah. <laughs> and people are very appreciative. You want to give it to people that like the kind of stuff that really like yeah. it or need it, you know, of course. You know. Yeah, yeah, I don't like, giving anonymously because I want to know that the person likes the thing and is going to sure. use it. I'm with you. Exactly. You know, I'm with you. I, I think that they, and it's really fun for me because I would see my, my nanny and give it to her nieces. And then I'd see pictures of her nieces wearing the kids clothes years later, you know, because you know, they were younger. So it was fun to see my kids clothes being worn on them. Yeah. It's, you know, it's used. So it, yes, it was right. good. It's good. Yeah. You know. Well, what about, um, French country decorating. Who are some of the bloggers in that field that well, you, you know? I, I I don't. I have a couple that I, there's two that came to mind. One was um. Do you ever see Courtney at the French um French yes. French country cottage? Oh, I that's how I learned about Carrie Ann. Oh, so what happened was I was you know maybe a year ago I was reading in one of her gorgeous French country cottage floral like magical you know, blogs and I thought well, I, I don't know how I stumbled across her but I loved her and so she's so enjoyable. And then one day she said, this is a girlfriend of mine, you know, because you know how the bloggers will do that. And so then I shifted over to there and then read Carrie Ann's and then got so many ideas from Carrie Ann. So I followed both of them. And there's another one called Michelle with one L, that vintage home design. Have you ever seen hers? Really pretty. Uh, I'm not sure where it's located, but it's a lovely. Um, what's the name know? of it again? Mich Michelle at vintage home design. Vintage home design. I yeah. don't think I found her yet. Yeah, but she, it, it, so to me, it's really fun to see 
you know, how people put things together or how they, you know, just even little things like, you know, a little vignette in their powder room or, you know, or just how they put together, how they put, you know, um, you know, flowers on a bag or something like that. Um, in fact, um, you know, I did a crazy little DIY one day. I have a girlfriend who loves, loves, loves pink, loves pink. And she's, so I went and got a, um, just like a burlapy kind of linen tote bag. And then I just took a bunch of, um, you know how you buy silk hydrangeas, you know, flowers, and they've got all those little tiny petals and little groupings. Yeah. So I just cut them all short, like, you know, like, like just a little bit, just little tiny ones. And I just glued them all on in this sort of a shape of a hydrangea blossom. And I glued it right on. So I glued like six, of, you know, like three big blossoms on it. And she loved it. And to me, you know, doing things like that just, you know, makes you smile because it's cute. It was, I did it on my blog was, you know, like DIY, whatever, you know, under my iHome stuff. And it was on this little tote. And it was just, I just, to me, those things are really special because it, it's kind of like when you see a, a top that's got a really cool design on it or some kind of, or a pair of jeans and when jeans had the little designs on, you're just going to get, you know, you're just special, it's different you know, than, than any, everyone else has got. You know? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. What about so, your, your house? How long have you been there and what have you done to it? Um, the house I'm living in now in, in California, in Chicago is actually, um, we, we built it. My husband and I built it um, 11 years ago. Uh, he was um, a, a retired, retired, newly retired banker, um, never been a general contractor, but decided to become the general contractor. And um, so he basically um, designed it. You know, he was really, we, he had looked at hundreds of houses and he's a practical guy. And so he kind of came up with a really nice floor plan. We have a first floor master, first floor great room and kitchen, which are connected, and then a separate dining room. Um, and then, um, then we have um, in a powder room on the first floor, laundry room. Then upstairs has got, uh, he doesn't want to come upstairs, which is fine with me. I've got my office and then I've got uh, two other guest bedrooms and bathrooms. And it's, um, and then the basement is uh, finished and has a really nice, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, movie theater area, playroom for the grandkids, and another be another bedroom down there, and a exercise room. So the design is lovely. Didn't, we didn't have to change the design once we moved in. We have a screened-in porch as well on the first floor, and so all of it's very livable space. And actually, I've been here for this is our eleventh year, and I'm just getting ready to change a few things. You know, um, decor-wise, I'm going to probably. Um, Oh, you, oh, you know, did you, did you meet Leslie? You know, Leslie, say, I think it's Saida. Um, she just wrote the book. She's on Karyan's mastermind group. Um, she wrote a book, just wrote a book called, what's it called? Um, I just got it. Um, she had one called My 100-Year-Old Home, but I think it's another one. It's so, so, but anyway, um, she wrote this lovely, lovely book and, she, and it's beautiful. So she did over, she just redid her powder room with some of that peel and stick wallpaper, you know, it's really cool. So I'm going to totally copy that. It's a pretty kind of a, a gray, kind of look like a twill, kind of a gray and white twill um, with the, um, uh, just so I'm going to do that in my powder room, it's just in the water closet part. And, or, and that, um, in the water, I'm sorry, the water closet of my master, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then we're getting ready to, um, I had some, I don't know if this was big in Canada, but you know, faux, faint, faux painting, you know, kind of like that washed, you know, that was really popular, um, you know, up until just recently. And so 10 years ago or 11 years ago, when we moved in, we had sort of a Tuscan colored um, kitchen area, great room and uh, dining room. So now we're going to um, kind of, we're gonna change that back to more of a dove white, which is what our cabinets are. Um, and just kind of um, kind of simplify it a little bit and see if we like yeah. it a little bit better. It's just for a change, yeah. Yeah. And then we're also taking um, out the ceiling fans. Ceiling fans, um, my husband likes them, I don't like them. And so we're taking down the one in the master bedroom and we're going to put a chandelier in there. So I'll look at Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. They have some that it is a chandelier, but there's a fan inside and it's acrylic, oh, but you can't no see. Way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You can look like on Wayfair or, you know, um, over so, in, so you mean the air gets moved, but you can't tell? Yeah. Because within, say it's like an empire chandelier. So uh -huh. inside where the light bulbs are, they have a uh -huh. fan in there. The, wow. The, what do you call it? The paddles or what are they called? Yeah, I think uh, the, uh, the fan paddles. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they're acrylic and they're see-through. Wow. So you can, when the fan is on, you don't see them at all. 
right? Yeah. Right. I, well, I like I, I like the chandelier. I like the chandelier behind you. I like that. <laughs> that's really pretty. Oh, the one up there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's cute. I like that other one there. We've got a few of them. We've got lots of really nice chandeliers in that's here. That's beautiful. That's really pretty. I like. I, so I, I, um, I, I don't need the ceiling fan in this master bedroom because you know we don't really turn on down there. So I yeah. just said, oh, it's got to go. So I'm looking forward to making that change. Oh, and then we have a ceiling fan in the great room. We're going to take that down and we're just going to put in a can, you know, because there's cans in the room. So yeah. I'm looking forward to getting rid of those things. Yeah, me too. I really don't like them. And um, one of my clients too. It's the the war between the husband and the wife about the fan, which yeah. I hear a lot. And so <laughs> I told them about these chandeliers with fans. So that's uh -huh. going to be the compromise for them. Well, I don't think I need it because I, mean, I just, you know, I just turned the air. He's, he's always cold anyway. So it's not like he really wants me to turn it down and I'm always hot. So, you know, what the heck? So, yeah. yeah. So you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> exactly. So what would you say is your favorite room in the house? Um, I really like my office, you know, like where I am right now. I mean, I mean, it's messy. My desk is messy, but I like kind of like the chaos of it. You know, I kind of like to get into my little spot on my little chair and just sort of start digging through my piles, you know, and figuring out what I'm going to do next. I like that a lot because it's really my space, you know. Um, I mean, I like my house. I like many parts, but I love getting to bed at night. You know, that's lovely. I love taking a bath at night. That's wonderful. But this space is really my own space, which is probably just as well because of the mess. <laughs> What's, what's your, your favorite? favorite what's, what's your oh. favorite spot in your house um, mine is my dining room oh how come yeah. well all all my favorite things are there like all my dishes are there and candles and there's chandelier and candelabras and table linens and glassware and beautiful antique armoires it's just it's my favorite room and i really love entertaining and I, so me too We've got a table for 12, so it's a big wow. table, it's extra wide, and yeah. it's just so gorgeous. I just love it. So that's my favorite room in the house. What did you do before you did your store? What was your job? Um, I was working for a while at a restaurant uh, supply place, so a showroom where they show commercial uh, kitchen equipment, mm -hmm. which I love because I love cooking, and I love every appliance that there is I have every appliance that <laughs> there is so for me to work in a place where I have access to all the commercial stuff yeah that was like oh my god because I didn't know at the time we moved from Belgium to here and I didn't have a job or anything we were just setting up the house and stuff and and then at Christmas time came we, we moved in July so Christmas came and there was a flyer that came to the house about this a commercial kitchen supply place and I was like oh my god there's a place like that here I've got to go there I've got to find oh, a check out there. so I looked like every week every two weeks for about six months and then finally there was a position and so I applied and I got it I think they said there was 62 people who applied so I'm happy I got it and I worked there for about five years um when I lived in Belgium um I worked for a while for Johnson and Johnson, like um, Janssen Pharmaceutica was bought by Johnson and Johnson. And I worked in the um, molecular biology oh, section, uh -huh. right? Uh, drug discovery. So uh -huh. um, I took care of a database of DNA vectors. So uh -huh. I had the program to, you know, how you put vectors together and then insert that in a bacteria or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Make a change. So um, I had all the the samples in freezers that I had to take care of and send here and there, and I had to take care of the sequences, making sure that the sequences of the DNA were right. So you know, and I was, was your, your training for learning all about your skills and getting all the details right. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Well, um, yeah, I trained to be a scientist, but I always was creative. Like I remember when I was twelve years old, me and my friend from school. Uh, his name was Billy. We were wallpapering my mom's kitchen and, and living room and we were painting and we always wanted to decorate and we went downtown to the big stores where they, you know, they'd have the, all those fake rooms with all the couches and dining rooms all set up yeah. and we'd go there like every weekend looking at furniture. And, oh, that's so funny. How old are you? Uh, 54. So we, we went, how, how, how old were you when you did all that though? Guys? Oh, starting around 12. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. 
So when I finished high school, I wanted to be a decorator or designer. And I took some courses um, with my boyfriend. There was a place called the Academy of Merchandising and Design that was in Toronto. So I started taking the courses and my boyfriend, <laughs> this is such a bad story. <laughs> we had to do drafting and then you had to go get it made into a blueprint and submit it to the teacher. So my boyfriend hadn't done his homework and I asked him, can you go get my blueprint done? So he got mine done and then he erased my name and then put his name and made another one. <clears throat> and the teacher found out. <laughs> he, he, he stole yours. Yeah, yeah, he stole mine because he wanted to have his homework done. And then the teacher noticed and called us in to talk to us. And he gave us a C. He didn't fail us or kick us out or anything, but he gave us a C. And then um, I was kind of discouraged and not happy. And then uh, I was working in um, a part time job. And one of the girls there, her sister was working for one of the top firms for interior designers in Toronto and she told me that you're going to be getting coffee and doing drafts for at least 10 years before they're going to let you do any designs so that kind of turned me off yeah. and you know when I was in high school I'd been obsessed with um, chemistry and, and science and so then I decided okay I'm going to do some biology things so I ended up studying that and then moving to Belgium, getting a job with Janssen Pharmaceutica, which is Johnson and Johnson. And, but it was, um, it was like a project where they get funding, you know, for five years. And then that project was done. And at the same time, there were a whole bunch of changes in the company. I think two pe 200 people in the, the department got let go and wow. we, we got to stay. And then there was reorganization. And then all of the decisions came from the US. So my boss wanted to keep me and the US said, no, we'll only renew her on a three month uh, temporary, like temporary, like through um, those agencies where you get a job, I forget what they're called. And so I just said, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just leave now, right? Cause you know, I didn't want to, take all my benefits away and make me an external employee um, mm -hmm. that wasn't right. And there was nothing my boss could do, even though he wanted me, I couldn't get it approved from the state. So I just left then. So then um, I stayed home for a couple of years. Um, my husband's mother was ill. She needed dialysis and special diet and all kinds of things. And we lived next door because uh, in Belgium, a lot of the parents, when they got married, they bought the lot next door, thinking that one day their children would live there. And that's just like kind of what they do. So um, they had this land next door to his mom and he had two brothers. So we built together like an apartment building, four stories with an underground parking right next door to his mother. And so we each lived in like a, an apartment, a condo in the building. and. Um, we put an elevator in and a, a hole through the wall so you could get into her living room. So, uh, and then upstairs, cause she was in a wheelchair. So she could come through into our building, take the elevator up and go back into her house. And um, so for a couple of years, I took care of her diet. I made all her meals. She couldn't have protein. She couldn't have potassium. She couldn't have sodium, um, you know, all these things. So I cooked her meals and brought her that um, every day. And then um, my husband, my husband was a hockey coach and we co-owned an ice rink. Um, so that that ice rink was an hour away. So eventually we moved to a house near the ice rink and then I got pregnant right away. And so I had our son and then you're allowed to stay home for I think four years in Belgium. Uh, wow. maternity leave. Yeah. So um, I stayed home with him. And then um, when he turns, I, I then I started working a little bit at the ice rink, just um, there was a restaurant and upstairs, uh, no, downstairs, like um, you could come off the ice with your skates on 
and get a hot chocolate or a waffle or even beer, you're, you're allowed to have alcohol. So, um, and then they would have parties where kids would have a skating party and like a birthday party, you all go skating and then you come up to the restaurant and have pancakes or chicken nuggets or whatever. So yeah. I would host these, por- these parties for the kids. Fun. I would set everything up and talk to them and get some activities for them. And then I decorated the ice rink for Christmas and all the occasions. So I was just working a couple days a week at the ice rink and the rest just taking my son to school and stuff. And then we decided to move back to Canada and that's when my son was um, six. And then you were originally moved. from Canada. You were, you were yeah. born there. Yeah. Your husband was born in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think I was there about 17 years. And so we moved back here because my dad had passed away and my mom was in Toronto and in a condo. And um, she she was alone and she was crying all the time. You know, she's lonely. She doesn't see anyone and all that kind of stuff. So my husband said, well, you know what? Ask her if she wants to live with us. And if she wants to, we can move to Canada and we'll get a granny suite for her. So we asked her and um, we said, you don't have to answer right now. Like we came for a visit, asked her the first day and we were going to see friends for a couple of days. And we said, you know, think about it for a while and let us know before we leave if you want to do that and she right away wanted to do it of course Mm -hmm. so we went back to Belgium and started filling out the immigration papers for my husband and so that was like August I think and then it was Valentine's Day that we got the letter saying that he was accepted to immigrate to Canada so we um, quickly planned a trip to come and buy a house. We had three weeks to buy a house. So we came, we found a house, we bought a car at the same time and had the garage hold it until the closing date of when we would move. Then we went back to Belgium, arranged for containers, arranged all our business stuff, um, you know, and we had to find a school for my son near our house in Canada. So we, we were visiting the school and stuff when we were here. So we arranged all that and then we moved uh, in July, we renovated so my mom could have her suite in the in the basement with you know everything she needs, walk-in closet, her own fireplace, her own kitchen, and all the things. So um, that's what happened. And then yeah. then I got Are the you job. Still in that house now? Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> what happened was uh, there was a house three doors down that I yeah. really loved, and we could never buy it because it wasn't for sale. And then one day it was for sale, and I, kept, I said to my husband, oh, my God, oh, my God. And he's like, stop. We're not moving. Just stop. Um, but it didn't sell for a couple months. And I kept looking at it and thinking about it and talking to him about it. And then one day I was outside on the front lawn and my next door neighbor. So it was in between the houses, she said, do you know that she wants your house? And I said, what? She's what? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Said, she wants it because it's made by the same builder and she wants to move, but she doesn't want her kids to go to a different school. Cause if we moved, she moved out of this town, the kids would have to switch. And so she didn't want that. And she said that my house was the only house in our whole neighborhood that she would consider living in. Right. So, so, okay. So I said, when can I come and see? So the next day I went, we went to come see the house. And then she came to see ours and we moved three weeks later. We signed a deal and moved same day. I had, uh, cause I didn't want to pack up all my pots like Le Creuset pots and stove yeah. pots. So I had the kids of the neighborhood of the street walking with the pots across the grass going like this. And That's like, beautiful. I moved out, we moved out the dining room and then she moved hers in. And then we started on the living room and oh, that's how, how did it. Yeah, so. you know, it's it's funny because um, ironically, I actually moved next door to my house, you know, and but not this house, the house before this. I had I lived in this one house for like 10 years raising my kids. And then I decided I always wanted to live next door. because I Again, I didn't want I didn't want to go look all over. I always a pretty house. I liked it. And I said to the guys next door, you know, if you ever sell your house, you know, I'd like to do it. So one day I come home and it was sold. And I go, why, why did you do that? He says, well, you know, you've done so much work on your house. We figured you didn't like me. And I go, 
are you kidding me? Thanks a lot. So then five years go by and then that couple decide they want to move. And I said, then, listen, I'm not kidding you. If you ever want to move, I want to move into your house. And so then I moved in and my kids were in eighth grade. So uh, they carried all the stuff back and forth, but, but it wasn't a total swap because the new people were moving into mine. So I had to empty my house out. Yeah. So we had about a, four weeks or three weeks. So every day the kids would come home from school, they'd move more stuff over and I'd put it away. <laughs> Oh my God. So that's but yours is even crazier though. I, I love it. It's a, very clever. Yeah. So yeah. Great. I love it. Nice story. It fun. And then we yeah. renovated that house again for my mom, right? Because they had a finished basement, but it didn't have a kitchen and a fireplace and a dressing room and all that. So we started renovating yeah. right away and we replaced all the floors in the basement and all the floors upstairs. So that meant all of the stuff from three floors was on one floor and it was like three or four months all this stuff like that while we were renovating and my mom had to, to stay with us because her section wasn't ready and it was like oh my god but now it's all worth it you know how long she, have you been in, in, in here in this house uh five years oh good and any big projects coming up for that one um you... <laughs> no it's pretty much pretty much yeah. the way it should be yeah. Yeah, yeah there's good. a few jobs that I need to get to that I never get to. Like I keep saying, I'm going to repaint the front door, but I never have time. I bought the paint; it's been sitting there since like eight months ago. Um, yeah, and you the know, front door I, is a great thing. It's kind of like getting your nails done. When your front door is done, you kind of feel like ooh la la when yeah. you want to get to the place, and then you put that wreath on. You're like, oh, it looks great. You know? Yeah, like I and you get your son to do it. Get your handy son. Get your boy on. Well, it's tricky. So what happened was. I wanted to redo the paint on the front door and I want my door to be like 10 Downing Street in, in England, right? Mm -hmm. I want shiny, like an old European door. So the only paint that you can get with that high sheen is the Faro and Ball paint. So I ordered that. And so I sanded the whole door and I put the first coat and then I was putting the second coat and my husband decided that day to go and clean the dryer. Oh, no. For the so, lint. Yeah, all the lint. You got to sand it all over again. Yeah, and then I had to sand it all over again. And then I had ordered a new key set, you know, the lock and the handle, brass yeah. plate and a brass lion. And yeah. so now that we took off the old lock, there's a space. The, the lock wasn't the same shape, so that's showing. Um, so it's, oh. it's still black and shiny, but it's not perfect. perfect. I want it yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah, um, I hear it sounds it's like it's got potential, but you just got to get there. <laughs> so yeah. You have to write a blog about how I did my door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I want to. And I want right. to do a thing about my pantry is always a disaster, even though yeah. it's got shelves and baskets and whatever, yeah. just because I'm busy yeah. and I just stick things there. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to do a before and after of, of Me that. Me too. Me too. It, uh, yeah. yeah. That I, would think be I was just thinking I need, I've got, you know, a lot of baking and, and holiday stuff coming up. So I, I'm, Carrie did a good piece on uh, good good uh, containers for organizing, and I think it was in January, so you can look on her on her blog. Um, yeah. And I was going to look at that again and order it stuff because I thought it would be fun. Just because you, know, you got all those little containers of this many raisins and this many cranberries and this, many, you know, and all in those little bags that fall over, and then they they fall yeah. into the of the lazy susan. It drives me crazy. So I just want to get them all around the periphery. It, they can stack, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got a, a lot of glass jars. So Me too. I have a lot of glassware. I, I much prefer that because I like to be able to see it. You know, I like to, be able to see yeah. through it. So when people, in fact, we had this party on Saturday, and you know, the guests brought up one of the guys was so sweet. He made some homemade applesauce, and he brought it in a, you know, in a top in a rubber made container. It's a, you know, it's a kind of yeah. foggy. And so I, I knew I don't like to throw containers out. So I'm making my applesauce. I'm going to bring them back to him so I can get rid of the glassware. <laughs> I want to. I don't like my glassware. <laughs> <laughs> so, funny yeah. yeah so what's your other house like oh my other house in california is um it's it's really pretty too very similar layout actually um although we have a pool there out in there it's so hot like uh, there's 100 days over 100 you know in the in the summer um so people tend to have uh, pools even you know just they just do it's really common um so the great room overlooks that um, but that room is really um, everything is it's really more bright. Um, it it faces the, the, the same rooms face the same direction, which is east for the great room in the kitchen um, and the master. But because it's so sunny in California, I mean, there's a song you know, like there's never rains in California. Well, that it's really true. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. 
it's way too sunny for me. I'm a retired dermatologist, so sun is not my favorite thing. So, um, so it's really lit, you know, so I have, so it's, I have to make sure that the fabrics, you know, are, can everything to stand up to that, you know, so I have, um, the, it looks pretty with all the white, but then with the pretty yellows and the reds and I, my, my bedroom, I haven't, I haven't done a blog post on my be uh, bedroom. It's really pretty. It's done in a lot of, um, pot, you know, pottery barn, pottery barn, the, the, so yeah. a lot of this linen, you no, know, but it's called wheat and stripes. It's a, it's a uh, ivory and soap stripe, really faint stuff. And then I had some red twill, but you know how mostly red twill is usually white with the red design? This is the opposite. So it's red with the white design. Oh. Really pretty chairs. I had those made, little chairs and a little ottoman. And that is sort of a little sitting area because the room was kind of an odd shape. So I needed to fill in the space. And I have the TV in the, a really pretty dresser over there. So I, I have it all on my, in my phone. I haven't taken them. I need the, the college kid to come over and, and put it together for me yeah. so and get the video together. But yeah, so I like um, I like things. I like um, to do, <clears throat> because I was a dermatologist, and when I go to do any kind of clothing things, I need um, really a neutral background. So like even if I'm packing to go on a trip, I have to like put a white sheet on the bed right, to lay my outfits down because if I lay it on a print or a, it's just too distracting for me. I need to be able to yeah. see it on a, a kind of a blank canvas, either a tan or a white, just a solid color because then I can see the outfits. Otherwise, I'm distracted by the you know stuff. So um, so that, but so my background in overall and my design of everything is usually a neutral linen-y, fabric -y kind of a couches and sofas in, in most of my rooms. But I change up the throws and the pillows and the, the you know the ottoman accessories, and in both homes. So yeah. California is, you is must similar. Love, to that. You must love fabric then. I, I love I do I love fabrics, but I love it not. I don't like to do a whole piece in it because I yeah. you know, um, because I don't want to be that committed. So I was surprised that I actually committed myself to these chairs. And then yeah. what I did, which was really cool, I took the same fabric that you know, I, I got extra. We have a place here called Calico Corners. It's like a fabric chain in, in some of the states and I have an Amazon little vanity chair you know like a little for your vanity in the bathroom and then I covered it in that fabric so I brought <laughs> the red full into the bathroom as well it looks oh, really cute cool. so nice. I need to put that on the blog I, I really should now that I'm talking about it I can see that it's interesting you know yeah you should but I love it so when I'm in yeah. it so yeah so yeah, I love red, red, red red's my accent in both 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 homes yeah yeah, yeah. like I love fabric so much and we sell fabric here, like we oh, carry. Oh, you do? Yeah, we carry Schumacher and oh, Rose nice. and York. Nice. And nice. So in the little room right there behind the light, that's uh -huh. my fabric and wallpaper room. Oh, so fun. I have like a big hutch, kind of a desk with a hutch so that uh -huh. you can open the wallpaper books and look that's at them. Real. Yeah. And then I've got all the fabric books there. So it's like some days I'm just looking at fabric and I love them so much. And such um, a dream. You can dream up all different kinds of ideas, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I go out to homes and help people decorate. And right now I've got one. No, I've got two people who are doing curtains. Oh, and nice. So we're picking the finishes. You know how you can have a band on the, the inner part of the hanging of the curtain? Yes. Um, so Schumacher and Romo have these most gorgeous embroidered bands. And we're going to use that. And well, uh, I on the panels it. on the inside of the panels basically oh, yeah. oh that's nice i'm outlining it that'd be cool yeah it's so yeah. fabulous so yeah i love it and you know um sometimes people come in or like one of my clients last year she had a tapestry above her couch that was her mother's and who she had passed away so that was something that she wanted to keep in the room but it was hard to find accent pillows for the couch with this busy tapestry so yeah. we looked and we found a beautiful fabric and it turned out that she liked the inside of it better than the outside of it. The so we had a series of cushions made, uh -huh. some with the inside, some with the outside, oh, good. some with a coordinating fabric that was really um, kind of satiny and shiny, like really mm -hmm. chic looking. Mm -hmm. And then some we did some with the, um, you know, the piping, some yeah. of the piping. So we would use the bubbly, fabric and then we would use the other fabrics piping and like we mixed and matched a whole series for yes. that room and it was so perfect and like you she would never have been able to find you know the proper cushions and this yes. way she got something that's totally custom that nobody yes. else yes I oh. love that 
yeah. I have yeah. um, two seamstresses, so I, I can get nice. things made. And then we do. And you can trust um, them. You, know, you can trust I them. Trust you know. them. Yeah. And then you can also help them. They're really good at figuring out the measurements, you know, how much more they're going to need for some kind of special yeah. item. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, with, with pinch pleated drapes, you have to, you know, know that formula. And, you know, when it, right. when the panel is done, it has to be perfect because they're sewn together. That panel doesn't move. Sure. You can make it smaller, but you can't make it bigger. Right. 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 Yeah. Let me right tell you right. what, one little design thing I did that was kind of my, my lady from Calico Corners thought it was really cute. Okay, so we, in my house, not this house, but the last house, um, when you would go into my, okay, I am at this desk, I have this desk, my desk is, is, is you know, I'm 5'4", desk is like 5'8", okay, it's a little bigger than me, okay, and, but what you, I would, I was from, you know, it's an oak desk, and it was, oh, you like that, it's oak, no, it's pine. Okay, and it was across the room. So you walk into this mat, this bedroom, which was my daughter's bedroom, and the desk was across the room. So when you'd walk into the room, which is it, it was always by the window, and, and you had it turned around, but then you'd see the cords, you know, coming down, and and, and I didn't yeah. like the way that all that looked because and you'd see this, and you'd see like you know your if you left your slippers under this desk, you'd all that. Yeah. So I had a curtain. I mean, I had a. Little, I'll send you a picture. I actually took a um a fabric, you know, and I had it made. Yeah. All gathered all the way around okay oh it's nice like, it's like a balance on the bottom and i velcroed it to the top of the desk to the bottom of the desk and it even has pom-poms on it so i'll send you a picture oh that'll be cute and so when you walk in the room so now i'm in a smaller study and you come in off the hallway and i have that fabric and then i have a coordinating stripe over on my window so it kind of between the mirror and this and that, yeah, all goes together. It looks really dirty, tidy, but right? it's really fun. So I'll send you a picture. I mean, I have to straighten up a little before I send it to you, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'll send> it. <laughs> it was a really clever concept. You know, the idea of practically using the fabric to solve a problem. You know, yeah, like uh, in French country uh, magazines and that, you often see that under the sink, right? They've got yes, that, right, that, exactly. That, 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 that little where they hide the little um the SOS and the you know the soap and all that stuff. Exactly. Or they'll yeah. do the, or they'll do it in a um in a vanity, you know, in a you know in a bathroom vanity. Yeah. Have, yeah. But I just thought this was kind of a cute way to kind of because I just couldn't see and see, and I'd walk in the room and and I just told the lady, I said, yeah, I'm gonna I think we should make like a little curtain. And she's like, okay, you <laughs> know, and it just stays on. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's that's special. Right? Yeah, and that's really cute. To it, right? It does have character. I love it. You know. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was really nice to talk to you. I really enjoyed it, and I, I think that, that I appreciate your asking me to um, come on your podcast. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, and yeah. um, I will um, try and send you a copy of it. So. Oh, be great. Yes. Have it too. And yes. Um, yeah. So thanks for coming. It was an interesting conversation. Uh, we're kind of alike in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we've done a lot of projects together over the years, you know, and, and, I, and I, it's, I mean, I know you, I heard you say some on some interview that, you know, you thought you'd be working, you know, until you, you were like in your fifties and you started this aspect and you're going to work till you're 65. And well, you know, here I am starting out. <laughs> I'm at the other end of that, you know, and so mm -hmm. I don't know how long I'll work, but I like, I do like the blogging. I do like um, telling people how, you know, ideas about how to, um, you know, make their life more full and, and, you know, find outfits that look pretty or that make them, you know, that address their middle age concerns and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, you know, yeah, fun. no, it's, it's helpful. Bloggers help people, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah. give them information and, and, and if people want to have the depth of knowledge, it's kind of like when you go to a store and you get a really good salesperson and you kind of want to take them home with you because you're like, oh, wait, that's such a great idea. We want to go back to the store, you know? And ask her more questions, but you don't want to bug them. And I think a blogger, they just keep coming into your house. You know, whenever you want to, when you want to, whoever you want to talk to them, you say, "Oh, let me see what she's what's she wearing today." You know, what yeah. what outfits is she? What she's going through? She's getting outfits ready for the holidays. Oh, and what does she think about? You know, like I did a blog the other day on three different uh, family looks to wear for a family photo. You know, because family kids, people are like, "Well, I don't know what to put on my kids and look that's going to go together." So I picked out the mom's outfit and then figured out everybody else's outfits around it, you know, and then I had all the links for it. And, and I thought, this is practical. I think this yeah. is really nice, you know, so yeah. people will me feel like that's really cute, you know, or and people that, you know, you know how it is people that have no idea how to make a table. They think it's like magic. And you yeah. say, let me just show you. It's easy. It's the same thing like putting an outfit together, you know, because most people yeah. put a shirt and a pair of pants on, but they don't know how to put the scarf on or the earrings or they think, oh, I could never wear that or whatever. Yeah. You have to kind of get into their head and help them figure out why it's a good idea to 
add that extra little zhuzh, you know? So. Yeah, and it's it's cool because when you go to a blogger, it's like you're going there because you're asking a question, but you don't right. actually have to ask the question. Right, she just, yeah, right, exactly. It's, it's a question you didn't even know the answer that you even had, you know? And, and yeah. I, in fact, just the other day, oh, on, on today, I actually, on my current blog where I talked about a black and white sweater, and I typically show on all my blogs of clothes how to wear three or four or five or six ways. Because I think people should have, if they're going to make a purchase, I think they should at least be able to come up with three ways. And yeah. if they can't, either they shouldn't buy it or they should go up to the cutest sales girl in the store and you know, the nicest, cutest, and say, hey, I want to buy this, but you know my blogger friends say I have to come up with at least three good-looking outfits. Can you tell me three ways right now to wear it? And if she can't, leave. Just don't buy yeah. it. It's not worth it. Okay. I mean, if it's a wedding dress, of course not. But but everything else, you should be able to do that way. And to me, so my girlfriend wrote in, and I said to her, I said, "If there's anything else that you guys are wondering about, like some item that you wanted me to style, tell me, and, I'll, and if I can style it, I will." And then she wrote, and she's a really cute dresser, and so she wrote back. I, I've had this denim vest, you know, for a number of years, and maybe it's just out, but I can't, you know, part with it. I just, but I can't figure out a good outfit. And so I just wrote back. I said, oh, we'll treat it like a jean jacket. You know, I said, you know, how would you wear a jean jacket? You know, you'd wear it with a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, or you'd wear it with a carbon neck and a pair of jeans. And what, what you specifically, and then I had some turquoise jewelry, because I know she's got turquoise jewelry. You know, I said, and if I'm going to throw yeah. this on and put on some cool bracelets and some boots, you'd be great. Done. You know, I said, oh, or you could put it over, you know, and I just kind of gave her a couple of different ideas. I said, you could put over a Johnny Wass. She's got a Johnny Wass embroidered tunic. I said, put it over that tunic, leave it out, and then put the leggings on. Done. You know, and so and to, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, you can't wait to go home and try it, you know? And, yeah. it's, and it's obvious to you and me, but, you know, but it, but it's not obvious to her. So I was happy to yeah. come up with the ideas. So that's, that's my job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so, fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's all over my head. It's like, like when I buy something, I, I, my husband's like, oh God, what happened? You didn't sleep last night. I said, I know I was really excited. I was like looking at those sweaters and coming up with some ideas and I'm writing down outfits. And he's like, oh. you know, and they just don't look like they're pouring out of my head. They're just pouring. I, have to, I have to literally have to write down the latest outfits because if I don't, I can't go to sleep. You know? <laughs> so, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, yeah. it's terrible. That we just have to do it, but it's fun. It's fun. And it is, I think you make a really good point that that's what I think the blogger does. A happy, you know, you have a good relationship with the bloggers because she's helping you to come up with answers to questions you didn't know you had. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Or answers that you didn't want to ask because you don't want to feel stupid. Right. That's and not it, a, right. A you didn't, you, or you didn't even think there was an answer. You're thinking, yeah. oh, she's going to probably just tell me this is too out. You know, like, you know, yeah. this is, you know, just get rid of it. You know, so yeah. if you love something, it's kind of hard to get rid of it. Let's see if we can work with it. You know, so. Yeah. So, well, true. thanks so much for meeting me. I really liked meeting you. Yeah, me too. So, and, and, and also, when you send me your stuff, to send me, um, tell me how I can send you the picture of this little uh, a ruffle on my um, desk. So, where okay. would you like me to send it to? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop recording and then I'll talk to you for like a minute more. Okay. And then I'll edit this out. So, I'm pressing right. stop.